Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to do, today we are gonna do everything I've had done to my face, from facials to plastic surgery to Botox and filler. To what have I done? What do I do regularly? How do I look so beautiful? Starting off with things I do regularly, I think I wanna start this video off by saying, I'm 31 years old, I'm turning 31, and I've also been on YouTube a long time. I also used to party a lot. So my face has changed a lot in the last like 10 years of being on YouTube. Obviously like early on, I was a child. <laughs> so you have baby fat and whatever. In the middle, I was in my 20s. I was like partying, I was staying until 6 a.m. Like you don't look good. I was very swollen. I was very tired. Like you just, when you don't take care of yourself, you obviously, it shows in your face. So I had a very like swollen face and now I'm 31. I've obviously like my face is hollowed out. I've lost a lot of baby fat. I also don't party or drink anymore <laughs> like that. So I've, my face has changed a lot. That said, I still have done things, but I just want to preface that because I feel like in my young twenties, I'd be like, it's okay to have like a nice round face in your early twenties. And like, I just, I'm seeing a lot of people get like buchal, buchal fat removal and stuff. And it's like, oh, your face is going to hollow out eventually. And that's like, that kind of like nice, keeps you like looking young and fresh and your face changes as you get older. So I don't, I don't really know what I'm trying to say there, but I just, I want to keep that in mind. But I do want to be transparent with what I've gotten done and maybe what I've regretted, what I wouldn't get again, etc. So I get facials once a month for my skin. You guys know that I've struggled with acne for a really long time and it definitely wasn't getting better as I was getting older. It was actually getting worse. So... I went on Accutane, I have, or a purist, I have a whole video on that if you wanna hear my experience. And then coming off of that, my skin was amazing for two years. And then about last year, when I was in Costa Rica, I started getting a lot of breakouts just from like the dirt and all of that. Pretty much leading up to that, I like didn't have a pimple, which was crazy. So I do get facials once a month by Jane at LAC and beauty. She's really hard to get into. Like I literally just booked my appointment for March. She's incredible. She's like a skin expert. She's really good with you have acne. Like she's amazing. Um, so I do that once a month. That's obviously like a big cost, but it's super worth it for me. Like it's just, it's really, really worth it. The price. Um, it's a lot of money on facials a year, but, but my skin has also all, always been like a, like a sore spot. So it's just something that I find is really worth it. I've also gotten Forma Facial. I got Forma Facial when I was like 27, I think, which is like, a, it's like a heat thing that they roll on your face and it like helps build collagen and like with your skin elast elasticity. So you have to get like five in like a certain amount of time. And then after that, you can kind of like keep up with it over whatever. So I did my five when I was like 27 and now I just get it like every other month, every three months, like I'm not super strict on it. So I've done that and I do that regularly. I've also gotten like facial, facial massage where they like go into your mouth. I have really tight muscles. I keep a lot of tension in my face and like upper part of my body. So I do, do, do that and I do it like, I don't know, twice a year. So that's all like regular non-invasive type things. I am on a prescription retinol for my skin and that's helped a lot. I started with a313 and then I moved to um, prescription. I actually went A313 and then I went to a SkinCeuticals one and then I went to prescription. And so that really helps my skin as well. And then the last like non, I mean, this is kind of invasive, but not really. Um, I got a lip blush and the first time I got a lip blush, I got it like mid pandemic and I kind of just like did it on a whim. Like I think Emily had reached out to me and I was like, fuck it. You know, it was like middle of pandemic and I'm like, I'll just do it. It was like, very shocking when you leave. You're like, oh my God. I'm like, what did I do? Cause it's a, it's a tattoo. They tattoo your lips. Then it settled into the most beautiful color. It really helped with like, my lips were a little bit uneven and I just loved, I loved it. It was so beautiful. So I think that's also like a really good alternative. If you aren't, you don't really want like your lips to be bigger, like lip filler bigger. Um, but you want like a little bit of like plumpness, plumpness, I think lip blush is like the way to go because it does, because it's like more defined, it kind of makes your lips appear bigger. And it also can even out any like asymmetries that you might have. And it also like gives you a beautiful color. So I love a lip blush. I'll leave who I use down below in Toronto. And like, I just, it, it was great, but find someone good because it also could be like a nightmare. It's a tattoo on your face. So you have to find someone with like good reviews. That's all like non-invasive kind of things. Now I do get Botox and filler. I started getting Botox, I think when I was like 27, 27, 28, I think. I can't remember, around there. Um, I started with my 11s. I 
frown a lot. <laughs> I had really deep like uh, 11s. And so I started with that and then I ended up going to do my forehead as well. And now I just this year started doing my crow's feet. I go to Nan's at Tide Clinic and I love Nan's. She's amazing. She actually like listens to what you want. And also she'll then also tell you like, no, you don't need that. Like that's insane. Whereas before I was going to someone else and I felt like there were times where I was really frozen, like really frozen. And that's also comes with like, I was really new to like getting it and I wanted to be frozen, I guess. Like I was like, freeze it, you know, but now I'm also getting older. Like I want to have full like movement in my eyebrows. Like obviously I can't do that very well, but like I can still like move my eyebrows. I can still like smile. Like I want to have some like natural movement. Um, and Nan's is amazing. I highly recommend. Something that I feel like I've learned with like this kind of stuff is I feel like when I first started, I was like, I should go to a plastic surgeon because they're the most educated and blah, blah, blah. And like, whatever. And then what I realized is that yes, plastic surgeons are obviously really educated, but they aren't doing this all day. They're doing surgery. Whereas nurses are doing this all day. So they actually are like very specialized and this is their this is what they do. So I've had better experiences with nurses than I have had with doctors. That isn't to say doctors are bad. That's just like my experience with that. I get my Botox about every six months, four to six months, I would say. It really depends. Um, and speaking about doctors, I am not a doctor. So <laughs> don't listen to me. What I like to do with my Botox <laughs> is I get it. And then I let it completely wear off where I have full movement in my forehead again, like full wrinkles, like everything can move. And then I let it be like that for like a month. I heard, and I don't know if this is true, but I heard that your muscles can atrophy and that freaked me the fuck out. Like if you just continuously get Botox and you never let it wear off and you never use your muscles. And I was like, uh, and I saw some photos and I was like, uh, don't want that. So I let my Botox wear off completely. I use my muscles for a month. I let them build strength. And then I get my Botox again. Is that a real thing? I have no idea. That's just what I do. So I've also gotten Botox in my masseters. I had TMJ or have TMJ. Um, my masseter muscles are humongous without Botox. Like, like so strong, I, like hippo, I'm a hippo. Like I can crunch down on like a watermelon. They're so strong. And I was finding I was waking up with really bad headaches because I was clenching my teeth all night. Um, and I mean, you can also get a mouth guard and stuff, but I was like, I'm going to, I'm getting Botox. So I've gotten that. That also has really helped slim down my face because these muscles were like overworking any doctor or nurse that I'm like, I should, when I don't have the Botox, like they feel my muscles. They're like, oh my God, that's very strong. So that has slimmed down my face a little bit, but I feel like it's actually brought my face more to like a natural state. Whereas kind of earlier on my face was really like, wide here because my muscles were so big because I was like clenching my jaw like all night. So I get that and I get that kind of the same, a little bit less than I get like this, I think less, but I get a lot of units in here. So I do get that. With Botox, other things that I've tried is when I talk, my nose like moves and I noticed it and then it started to really bother me for literally no reason. Like I just need to stop looking at myself, like who cares? So I did get a little Botox here one time to get my nose stopped moving. And I actually thought it was really cute. Um, like it kind of helped a little bit. And it, I think it kind of like pushes your like nose, not that my nose needs to be pushed up a little bit more, but um, I did do that. It was fine. I've gotten it once, never got it again, but thought it was cute. I got a lip flip, which again is a great alternative to filler for some people. For me, it looked horrible. Like I look botched. Like, I don't know what it is about like my smile being flipped up, but I, it was scary to me. I hated the way I looked. I got it this year. I was so freaked out when I smiled. I just really, really disliked it, but I think it looks so good on some people. And I don't know if it's like the lip filler, lip flip combo I didn't like, or I just like wasn't used to it. I don't know, but I really, really hated it. And so I'll never do that again, but I do think it looks beautiful on some people. And again, I think it's like a good alternative to lip filler if you just kind of want like your smile to have a little upper lip. Cause what it does is it like pushes your lip to like, a lot of people have lip under and it kind of like brings that up. 
So hated it on me, love it on some people. So that's it for Botox. Oh no, I got trap Botox like here because I go like this. I'm like mm, always like up here. Even when I used to do karate when I was a kid, it was like, my sensei was always like, bring your shoulders down, bring your shoulders down. Like my shoulders are always like clenched. And I was like, listen, I have anxiety, but I've always kind of like been like this and like hunched. And so I was like, oh, maybe trap Botox will like help me like relax a bit. And I didn't, it, I didn't see a difference. I really didn't. It like, I didn't see any difference aesthetically. I didn't see it like posturally. I didn't feel it. I actually felt like it made my back hurt a little bit more because I was like using muscles that I, that I don't usually use. Um, but it w I had never did it again. It wasn't worth it for me personally, but for some people, I think it works really well. I have also gotten lip filler and this has been a serious journey for me because I have always had a big bottom lip, um, but I have a really small top lip. So I really wanted a top lip. I got filler, I think at 26 or 25 even. No, maybe 24. I started getting filler in my top lip. Um, so I just started with top lip. I went to a plastic surgeon, hurt like hell. I think there's a video on maybe about it. I don't know. And then I never went to that person again. And then I started going to a clinic that I found and they ended up like overfilling my lips. I think I got a little bit caught up with my lips. My lips ended up being pretty big for my what I think. I'm sure for some people it was like nothing. But for me, I was like, they look a little big when I look back on it now. And then I ended up finding a plastic surgeon, another plastic surgeon. I went to them, they um, dissolved my lips and redid them. And then I think that they looked like horrible and not what I wanted. I just, it didn't look good on my face. Like it just looked really bad. There wasn't a nice, like my lips just looked like they were like mushing into my rest of my face instead of like being a separate thing, if that makes any sense. So hated them. And that's when I found Nans who does my Botox. Um, she is like a lip magician. She is so great. So she dissolved my lips again. I think we had to dissolve them twice. And then I actually had to live without lip filler. Like it's a big deal. I had to live without lip filler. Oh, I had to not have lip filler for like, I think it was like just over a month. And that was like mid pandemic, I think like 2020, 2021, 2021, I think. No, it's 2021. And so, I had to do that. And then she rebuilt them up and now I really like them. That said, I haven't got my lips done since July of 2022, I believe. I have to double check that. So um, that's a year and a half and they still, to me, look really nice, look really like my top, I still have a top lip. I really like how they look and I'm not really planning on getting it anytime soon. Like maybe in like March. I think something that happens especially when you first start like getting some stuff done is that you get a little like caught up in it and then you get it and it's big and then maybe it like deflates a bit and then you're like, oh my God, and I need to get it again. And then you get it too often. Like I was getting my lips done at one point, like every six months, like unnecessary. Like I don't need to do that. Lip filler really does stay in your body for like a long time. You just, yeah. And, and my view also has changed. Like I don't feel like I need to get that much stuff done anymore. Like I really was like obsessed with it for a while. And I was like, I need a bleph and I need, I need this and I need that. And it's like, you actually don't. I actually just need to like stop looking at myself so much and stop nitpicking my face. Like it's so not good for you. So anyway, <laughs> off my rant, lip filler. Um, <clears throat> I have gotten a little bit of my bottom lip as well, just to kind of like even them out. But I mostly just focus on my top lip. That's all I, I just like want them to be kind of the same. But right now I'm really happy with what I have done. I'm really happy with like how I look. Um, for a long time, I was like hyper fixated on my smile lines and stuff. But like, I think over the last year turning 30, I've just really changed kind of like how I see things. And I've really just become like, okay with the way I look and aging and wrinkles. And I don't know, like, I think in my twenties, I was like so scared of aging that it like started to freak me out that I was like, oh, I need to get all this work done so that I never age. And it's like, baby, we're all gonna age if you get to, you know, like it's all, it's gonna happen. We're gonna get wrinkles. And I think when I watched the supermodels documentary, even though I know that these women are supermodels and so beautiful and, you know, so rich and different kind of privilege, but seeing them in their six fifties, I was like, okay, we all age. Aging is beautiful. It's not something to like run from where I think I 
was definitely doing that for a while. So now I just like to do a little bit of tweaking to kind of like make my, my face feel fresh and how I like to look. But overall, I'm like much happier with keeping it low key. So yeah, that's everything I've had done to my face. Uh, let me know. Let me know if there's any procedures that you like. <laughs> love y'all. Peace, love. Bye.